Live from the Addison Improv in Dallas, Texas, this is the Adam Carolla Show. Adam's guest today, comedian J.L. Coven. With Gina Grad on news, Bald Brian on sound effects, and we'll play the Rotten Tomatoes game. And now, person, man, woman, camera, TV. Thank you, man. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for coming out. I do, I do appreciate it with all that's uh, going on these days. Uh, we'll bring up um, the gang in a second. I just want to talk a little bit uh, at the top. Um, I've been uh, having, having a nice time in your town. Um, I uh, will hold the applause. <laughs> I gotta say, I passed the Kennedy Memorial today. Not the height of uh, architecture. The, I don't know what it is. It's like somebody said, uh, well, Kennedy was a great man. We need something historical to uh, represent him. How about a handicap stall at a bus station? Like, isn't that essentially what the monument looks like? It looks like, do we have a, you have a picture of that thing, uh, Max Pata? We can, during the lights, uh, bring the lights down a little. That's, that's a handicap stall, right? Like, you could tell which one of your coworkers was taking a shit. You'd be like, oh yeah, Steve always wears Keds on Monday, so that's, that's a tell. I don't know what this says about a man's greatness. It just basically says, uh, we like to tilt up slabs of concrete here in Dallas. I don't know, maybe something, uh, maybe something out of bronze, you know, on a horse. Although on the other hand, uh, good luck tearing this shit down, Black Lives Matter. Like you, you're never, good luck. You'd need, you need like one of those crews that takes down casinos in Vegas. They need like a, like a seven week head start and a whole team and like cherry pickers and guys with roto hammers. You'd have to cordon off the whole block. Like there's no way an angry mob is ever gonna get to your memorial when your memorial is literally just a tilt up. Like this is the same construction they used to make a Costco. You understand? It's. Poured in place concrete. They're called tilt ups. They form them and pour them. This thing needs a fucking tin roof and an old lady handing out samples in front of it. <laughs> Got one handicapped parking, couple of larks so the fat people could get around. Uh, speaking of that, there is more scooters per capita in this town than even, I'm from LA and we don't have this many scooters. I'm out, I don't know, where's the hotel, Max Pata? 15 miles uh, over that way? Like we're, we're kind of in Dallas. Yeah, we're like in the downtown. We're in like downtown, but everybody is on a scooter and it's like every 15 year old kid is fat and on a scooter and now <laughs> there's gonna be some there's probably gonna be some app that is connected to Grubhub where it's called, we carry you to your scooter. <laughs> Tired of walking to your own scooter, fat ass? <laughs> you now can ride somebody to your scooter. They will get, we, we have volunteer firemen who are off duty who will carry you to your scooter and place you on it. Uh, speaking of uh, being, being lazy, I had about like the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Uh, traveling happened today, which is uh, like, like, you know that thing when you travel? And you travel, you go, I should be working out, but then you go, oh man, with the time difference. It's like, it's only an hour time difference. Yeah, I know, but my fucking bones, you know? And it's like, <laughs> But you're always thinking of excuses, right? So, so I've been doing shows, and I've been traveling around a little bit, and every hotel I go to, I go, uh, 
is the gym open? And they go, no, sorry, sir. And I go, thank you, thank you, thank you, fuck that. I'm gonna go drink in my room. I'm gonna slam heroin in my room. Call me. Call me when it's time to eat again. Like, sorry, the gym is closed. The bar's open, the gym is closed. Okay, yeah, okay, all right, all right, all right. So uh, this is the first hotel we've ever been to where the gym is actually open. And I was like, I carry a pencil just to break it. I was like, fuck, the gym is open, god damn it. So I was like, well now the gym's open, now I gotta go to the gym. So uh, what happened today is uh, I went to the gym at 1.30, I walked up, I used my key card, the key card thing did the weird not working thing. I did the only move you have, which is I'll slide it on my thigh four times, then I'll come right back with it, as if that's ever worked, but you gotta try it anyway. Put the key card in, didn't work again, looked up at the sign, gym closed between one and 4 p.m. And I was like, well. <laughs> My compromise is that I ate seven pounds of barbecue and drank four beers. I was like, we're going. We li I literally went from the gym door to uh, Pecan, is it called, Max Pata? Pecan, we went, pe went Pecan. We literally just went, fuck it, gym's closed. We're going to the barbecue. Went to the, went to the barbecue. Um, this guy, by the way, uh, tell me if you know this guy. Tell me if you are this guy. I like this guy. I showed up at the gym the same time another guy showed up at the gym, and he said, uh, what's going on with the gym? And I said, yeah, it's, it's locked. It must be a COVID thing. And he went, it says 24 hours on the sign that's 27 years old. The sign that's 10 minutes old that's in the window that's made out of a piece of paper that says closed between 1 and 4 p.m. So I pointed at the new sign, because I always go off the new sign, not the sign from 1986, the sign from Wednesday. So I said, I think this sign, I'm gonna listen to this sign. And this guy goes, this is bullshit. And he goes, I'm gonna get in this gym. And he storms off for the front desk. Now, I know we all hate this guy, but don't we kind of like him in a weird way? Like, aren't we jealous? Like, I was just defeated immediately by the sign. I was like, I guess you're not good enough to work out. Go home and eat some barbecue and cry yourself. Get in a fetal position, beat off, and go to bed. Like, there's no gym for you. That, this guy was like, this is bullshit. And he stormed off to the front desk. Uh, never came back, though, so I don't think he, I don't think he got in. But... Uh, I like that kid's uh, moxie. Also, um, let's see. Gym uh, clothes. Can... Oh, okay. I wanted to uh, wanted to share a couple ideas with you tonight before we get started. Speaking of the gym, I realize that um, when it comes to the physical, like I have to get a physical every once in a while. If I want to go uh, do a car race, I got to go do a physical, get my license and stuff like uh, up the snuff and everything. And I don't know if you guys are with me, but the physical, when I was a kid, a physical, it was physically weird. Like when I used to have a physical for Pop Warner football, you'd have to drop your pants and some guy'd be touching your nutsack and you'd be <laughs> coughing and it'd be weird. And you'd, like, you'd just be in your underpants back in the doctor's office and the nurse would be walking in and out. It'd be a weird thing. and it was kind of physically weird. Like the physical was physically weird. Now, you know, you get older, you'll get nude in front of anybody. You don't give a shit anymore. You, you just don't care. That's what happens you get old. You don't care who sees you naked because no one wants to see you naked anymore. So it's like, it's, it's, it's a perfect, it's, it's a perfect marriage. They don't want to see you naked. You don't care if they see you naked. So you just get naked, you don't care. But there is an emotional part of the physical where they start asking questions. And they usually start off pretty good for me. Like they'll go like, family history of diabetes? And I go, nope. They go, you on any medications? Nope. Heart conditions? Nope. High blood pressure? Nope. Do you drink? What's that? <laughs> Do you drink? Oh, 
Well, not, you know, I'm not an alcoholic, if that's what you're asking. No, no, I'm saying, do you drink? Ah, oh, yeah, I, you know, occasionally. Like, you know, I drink like everyone drinks, you know? Everyone doesn't drink. Oh, yeah, but, you know, the cool people, like the people you want to hang out with, right? Like, I drink like they drink. How often you drink? Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, special occasion. Like, like for, let's say I'm christening a ship or something, you know, I might have a little, whatever's left in the champagne bottle, a little toot, you know, nothing. How often do you drink? Every day. Every day? Yeah, like everyone. Uh, everyone doesn't drink every day. Well, we, again, we don't want to hang out with those people. You drink every day? Listen, I'm buzzed now. I'm not drunk. I'm buzzed, you know? It's, it's, it's almost four in the afternoon. It's one. Okay, but it's almost Friday. It's Tuesday. Okay, but the point is, let's not judge. A little buzz going. Do you smoke? Oh, not a smoker, if that's what you're asking. I mean, I mean, maybe, I mean do you smoke? Hey, look, if I'm at a party and a really hot chick likes two cigarettes and hands me one, like maybe I'll just take a little puff off it or something. I'm not a smoker. How often do you smoke? Just when I drink. <laughs> I uh, also um, had some thoughts about uh, some thoughts about dentistry because I was thinking about this sort of healthcare stuff, and I was like, uh, you know, I had some some pretty good dental surgery the other. God, oh, this whole COVID thing—I can't tell what month it is or what time means anymore. Like people are like, you have twins? I'm like, oh, yeah, I got twins. How old are they? Between nine and sixty-two. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Like, I don't know how long you've been married. 400 years? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this COVID thing. And I can't get my time down anymore. But I was thinking, so I had dental surgery probably nine months ago. And, you know, the guy's like, we got to extract the tooth. And we got to get the gum back. And we got to put the auger bit in the thing. And then we got to put the post in. And we got to do the gum graft, the bone graft, and all this shit. And he said, you're gonna be passed out the whole time. Like it's pure twilight sleep. And I thought to myself, like, that's good. You won't, you won't feel anything. But there's still kind of the mental aspect of it, right? Like it's on the calendar. And I was kind of thinking, you know, dentistry started off as, you know, have a shot of vermouth and squeeze on this rag. And the guy just got in there with the tongs and it was brutal. Then later on, they got into like Novocaine, but the Novocaine still hurt really bad. And you could hear everything and you knew what was going on. And then they got into the laughing gas and that kind of worked, but the Novocaine still hurt. And then they started the numbing. Then they started this whole twilight sleep thing, which is absolutely unbelievably great. Like you just wake up and you're like, what happens? Like we're done. Why are my pants around my ankles? You know what? <laughs> Whatever. It was worth it not to experience whatever you were doing in my mouth for the last hour and 28 minutes. So all is forgiven. I won't say a word. Uh, so, but I was thinking the next evolution of dentistry is not knowing you're going in because when you know you got a procedure, you know you got the wisdom tooth, you know you got to do the graft and the thing and the drilling and the bone and all that shit, it freaks you out, right? You know they're doing it in your mouth. And then what they do is they go, you come in Monday at 8 a.m. and you're like, shit, and your whole week's ruined, right? The weekend's ruined because like Monday, oral surgery, Monday. And like, Here is the next, do we have any dentists in the audience tonight? Fantastic. <laughs> Do, is everyone here just like a crossing guard or a, <laughs> work in a prison? Is there any professionals at all here? Is anyone above a GED here tonight? Is anybody, anybody, anybody with one year of junior college under their belt? Anybody, just a couple. So, all right, well tell this to your dentist because this, this is my gift to you guys in dentistry, which is the next evolution of dentistry has to be this. 
you don't know you need oral surgery. You go into the dentist office, the dentist, uh, the guy gives you a checkup, he comes running back in the examination room and he goes, Excelsior, this was excellent. You, my friend, eat as much taffy as you want and by the way, just eat a handful of taffy and go to bed every night. You don't even need to floss anymore. This is excellent. You're the best patient I've ever had. And I'll see you never. 100% awesome checkup. You leave. You go out that night. You celebrate with your wife, your beautiful, awesome, 100% checkup. As you're at the restaurant, you're hoisting a glass, you feel a sting on your neck, the room starts spinning around, your head drops on the table. Four days later, you wake up in bed, you have bloody gauze stuffed in your mouth. You say to your wife, what happened? She's like, you had three impacted molars, it was, it was four hours of surgery. You're down 18 pounds and I blew you on the second day. You're welcome. And you're like, huh? Would that be the greatest advancement in dentistry ever? Thank you. All right. All right, should we uh, bring on uh, J.L. Coven and Bald Brine and uh, Gina Grad and uh, these guys on to hang out with us? Yeah, hi guys. What's happening? Hi, guy. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Gina, your hair looks uh, fantastic. I don't know what's going on, but... Uh... Thank you. You know, you've been commenting on it lately, and I'm thinking either you finally think that I know how to dress myself, or maybe you're like my new gay BFF. Yes. I, I'd like to think of myself as your uh, new... Fruit fly, I think we call it. We're not allowed to say fag hag anymore. <laughs> Shit, I just oh, no, said no. it. <laughs> Shit. Uh, you are on an island, Ball Brian? Yes, once again, I'm on uh, lovely Balboa Island with the in-laws. They're lending a hand as I'm not able to help out with Tessa too much these days. But uh, it's lovely down here, 73 degrees. And the oh, today was great. It is hotter than the hubs of hell out here, man. <laughs> it's just, just heat and folks on scooters circling me. JL, JL, where are you at? I'm in New Jersey right now. Hello. <laughs> good, good to see you, Jail, Jail Coven. Uh, you. If you don't, people don't know it. He's kind of uh, taken the internet by storm with his uh, Trump impersonation, and he does an Adam impersonation as well. But uh, could we have a little taste of, of Trump before we uh, get moving? Sure. When I, I put on the hat, like it's uh, over the top. Yeah. Uh, so we're happy to be in uh, we're in Dallas. It's yeah. the, they call it the Addison Improv, right? The Addison. But I think yeah. It's, mm -hmm. You know, they couldn't get the rights to Dallas, I guess, but that's okay. <laughs> but uh, we're happy to be here. Obviously, you've been uh, very strong. I've seen you on Tucker. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, hey, uh, think, Donald, I, look, excuse, I don't want... Excuse I, me. Excuse I, me. I, yeah, sorry. Okay. No, well, it's, you know, you asked me to come on the show, and then all of a sudden you start talking over... I mean, I was elected president, and I respect... I, I don't, don't want to call you out. I, I, I saw pictures of you golfing with Brett Favre today, and, uh, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and... You know, to be fair, I busted uh, Obama's chops when he went golfing during the uh, economic crisis. I just feel like I got to be even handed. You're golfing. There's a pandemic going on. You're out with Brett Favre. Uh, isn't that sort of bad optics? Well, I'm maintaining 12 feet from all the black caddies, so we're doing proper <laughs> social distancing. And I think I think it's only six. It's six feet. Well, you know, we try, we're, we're being extra cautious. It's called it's called extra caution and you know we're doing brett Favre, or i think it's pronounced favre he actually said that colin kaepernick was a hero and i needed it was kind of like a golf summit because i needed to set him straight oh i see i see he, sure, yeah. so it was sort of work it was a, it was a working vacation well it's one of the you know, exactly the golf is one of our great places to do business deals and to you know tell Mississippi quarterbacks that they're being too progressive. So we, we did great things today. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Brett Favre was a Mississippi uh, quarterback before uh, before going to the Green Bay Packers. Who's your team? I, are you a Washington? Are we allowed to say Redskins? We can't say Redskins mm -hmm. anymore. No, I'm, I mean, I would have been a strong support. Obviously, I'm in Washington. I love the New England Patriots uh, because I'm friends with Bob Kraft. Bob Kraft, but, uh, right. I would say that, uh, you know, the Washington team, I can't support them until they come up with an 
you know, a great strong name. I was going to say the blacks, because if you walk around Washington, D.C., you see a lot of them. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So it sounded, I think we got a bad, we got a bad connection. You were, try, you were trying to say the Blackhawks, because they have a hockey team. No, that's, and they're, you know, they're, they're very good as well. We respect them. But no, in, in Washington, D.C., you know, they call it Chocolate City. Maybe you call it the Washington Chocolate People. Mm -hmm. sort of, uh, chocolate um, People, yeah. I don't... You want it to represent, where, you know, that's what I see a lot of when I'm, when I'm around. Well, it, it's DC. true that the, the roster probably has more African Americans than American Indians on the roster. I haven't checked it lately, but I'm just assuming there's probably a higher percentage there. So there, maybe there's something there. Brian, you have thoughts? I was going to say, uh, Mr. Trump, I mean, God forbid you lose this election. You'll have a couple of months afterwards before you're actually out of office. So, you know, do some sort of personal interest things. Maybe you can make an executive order uh, renaming the team. Well, that's, you know, we're already looking into that. So that's a good, oh, good. Uh, that's a good suggestion, you know, because other than pardons, I'm going to be doing a lot of pardons in those couple of months. But other than that. No, we're looking at a lot of strong names for, you know, the, uh, for the Washington can I Can I suggest this? Uh, I don't know if there's such a thing, but is, is there such a thing as a pre-pardon? Like, I don't, I don't know if, you, you know, I know you pardon people after they commit crimes, but, you know, your buddy Kanye West, I feel like there's going to be like a triple homicide in the next three to seven days. Could you pre-pardon... Is it possible to pre-pardon someone so it, when he goes to prison and you go out of office and Biden comes in and Biden's not going to pardon him, you grandfather in the pardon. And if you're doing pre-pardons, I wouldn't mind a pre-pardon either. Well, we're look, you know, we're actually looking and I've already pre-pardoned myself. So that's, oh, you uh, have? Yeah, oh, I didn't. Cool. Okay, well, there you go. Savvy. But Sorry. I think Kanye could definitely use a few. I think he might need a few, so I'll have to see how many he uses up before I give you one. But we're looking oh. into it. There's a, there's, a, there's a finite amount of pardons. Pre-pardons. Well, pre, well, no, no. Pardons, you know, go ahead and commit the crime, Adam, and I'll give you a pardon, but we're looking at how many pre-pardons. Yeah, I just, I'd like to show up. It's like, I'd like, it's like the, I want the coupon in my pocket before I go into the Mexican restaurant that has the two-for-one taco nights. You know what I mean? I want it in my pocket. No, that's, you know, you like that? Well, I'm not, I'm kind of anti-coupon, but I understand what you're saying. <laughs> no, I'm, I, that's a metaphor. I'm just saying, if I could get a pre-pardon and Kanye could get a pre-pardon, that would just be awesome. Well, you know, we'll look into it. We're going we're gonna to talk to some people. And we'll see what, <laughs> what, what percentage of stuff that you say you're looking into are you actually <laughs> looking into? Because I feel like it's got to be in single digits. Because I feel like you're looking into everything, but it can possibly be you're looking into all the things you say you're looking into. It's got to be a small percentage. When I say we, I mean sort of the Trump team. You know, we mm -hmm. have a great business. A great, we have a large government as well working for us. I don't know if you know that. Mm -hmm. So when I say we're looking into it, I'll look into it. I mean sort of the whole team. Like when you say you're going to do something, sometimes it means somebody on your staff is going to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's that sort of, you know, that kind of thing. The whole Trump team. So are you, are you looking into what percentage of the things you're actually looking into? <laughs> Well, we already, I already sent a tweet, and we're, sending, oh, okay. so we're, we're having people look into that, into how many, what the percentage of things that I specifically am looking into. So, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm looking out in the audience tonight. I'm not seeing a lot of masks out here in, in Texas. So well, some people are wearing masks, others, uh, others aren't. Uh, do you have a message for the people who are wearing masks or aren't wearing masks? I don't know what your thoughts are. Well, as you know, I'm very pro-mask as well as anti-mask. So, uh -huh. Okay. You know, sort of it depends uh -huh. on who's talking. But, you know, I generally don't wear masks, you know, because people want to see their president being very strong, not mm -hmm. sort of hiding. Mm -hmm. But I respect it if you want to wear a mask, if you're sort of terrified and anti-American. <laughs> okay, well, I, you know, I see a lot of people wearing masks here. They don't seem anti-American. They just seem No, like... they, see, they seem like, like I said, they're great people. They can wear the masks. I don't know. I thought you called <laughs> them anti-American moments ago. No, well, no, no, no. We can, you know, maybe you should look into that because I definitely didn't say that. All right, I'll, I'll look into it. Yeah. 
All right, should we do a little, uh, let's see, we're going to do, what are we going to do? We're going to do... Uh, rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes, tomatoes not Blah Blah Blog. Sorry, we're doing Rotten uh, Tomatoes. Want to play that? All right, let's do that. Listen to that noise. Such a high falsetto voice. That can only mean one thing, and you can feel it. Got some names of flicks, and the gang makes their picks. Guessing if it's rotten or fresh If they guess who needs it They will get a bonus five It's the Rotten Tomatoes game You know how we do it Give me the Rotten Tomatoes game Now it's time to play it All right, Dawson, what's the theme? Well, we are hashtag blessed to have President Trump with us today. And in honor of his presence, we're dedicating the Rotten Tomatoes game to a researched list of Trump's favorite movies. Ooh. Ooh. All right. We'll start back in 1997. Now, just uh, real quick, everyone, just to lay the groundwork, uh, we're going to guess the critics' score for Rotten Tomatoes on any of these movies, and uh, whoever comes the closest is going to win, but we'll add it up at the end. So it's kind of like uh, Trump's favorite game, golf. Whoever has the lowest score is going to win. So if a movie's 75%, you guess 70%, then you get five points in that uh, particular round. All right, go ahead, Dawson. Back in 1997, Donald Trump was interviewed for a profile in The New Yorker. He declared the Jean-Claude Van Damme slugfest with a quote, Incredible, fantastic movie. JL, how would he say that? Well, that's an incredible and fantastic movie. <laughs> exactly. Though he did admit that he tasked his son with fast forwarding through all the plot exposition. From 1988, the movie is Bloodsport. Oh boy. 1988. Uh, Donald, have you, uh, it's been a while probably since you've seen Bloodsport. Do you remember uh, some of the highlights? Are you a big Van Damme fan? Well, you know what? I, uh, normally I'm not a fan of the French. Okay, they're sort of a weak people. A weak? But weak people? A, weak, a very weak sort of people. But, okay. you know, I think I like that he sort of defied the stereotype. You know, he came out there, he was very violent. Great actor, by the way, too. And, He's you know, I thought... He's, where's he from? He's from Belgium. He's well, Belgium. whatever region of France he's from. I, mean, I was speaking generally France. But, you know, President I Trump, can, can I ask you this? We got the wall going up between uh, the Mexican border and the United States. Now, I know Jean-Claude Van Damme lives in Vancouver. He's in Canada. And if you don't want him in this country, perhaps a second wall along the Canadian border might be in order. Have you ever thought about that wall? Well, you know, some, well, I don't like Trudeau. That's the person who I'm most concerned about right. in Canada. But no, Van Damme, we would welcome. Oh, you know, because okay. I said, All right. He sort of defies the stereotype. He's very strong. All right. And when I from Revenge of the Nerds, you know, got injured, he avenged him. So he was fighting to avenge the great American. And he fought the, okay. you know, he All fought right. the Asian with the pecs. Okay, so... Moving, uh, so. <laughs> So Trudeau is out and uh, Van Damme is in. I don't want to get you started on Time Cop because I know how much you love that movie. So let's all just uh, weigh in here. Uh, Bloodsport, I, I never saw this movie. It seemed a little too deep for me into the... It just, it just a little much, but I know it's kind of a cult classic and I think uh, the critics sort of liked it for what it is. Is everyone locked in? Yeah. I'm going to say barely, barely rotten at 58%. I want a little lower. It's not a good movie, but uh, there, I think some people ironically love it. 40, 41, 41. I was going to say 41, but I said there's no way in hell. I went 33. President Mr. Trump? President? And I said, because I think the critics are terrible people, I went with 45 because I'm the 45th president. Oh, sure. and I think, 45. I, think I disrespected it the way the media disrespects me. 45. Okay. Bloodsport is rotten at 
percent. Ooh, Ooh, oh, okay. Okay. Right there. okay. Okay. See, yeah, the people had it at seventy-four. It's a pe- the, you're you're a president of the people, and Bloodsport is a people's movie. President. Agreed. That's okay. a good point. Thank you. <laughs> they're not all jokes, people. Sometimes they're just <laughs> affirmations. Insightful. <laughs> Go ahead, Dawson. For a period of time, the Trump Organization's YouTube channel would feature vlog entries from the desk of Donald Trump. In 2012, Trump reviewed this next movie, saying, quote, the movie is really worth seeing, and more importantly, Trump Tower, my building, plays a role. Jail? Most important, I have a great memory. My building, Trump Tower, plays a strong role. Yeah. It's the third film of the Christopher Nolan trilogy from 2012, oh. The Dark Knight Rises. Ooh. All right. So one of these movies, or two of them, is really good. What's the one Brian's always trying to get me to watch? Dark Knight. The Dark, the Dark Knight. Knight is, is spectacular. It's one, truly one of the all-time best movies. This is, this is the sequel to that. This is a sequel. All right. But uh, everyone likes the new version of Batman. Who would have... This uh, trajectory of Batman to start off as a weird... Starts off as a comic book, then turns into a really campy TV show, then kind of turns into a campy, semi-serious feature, and then turns into a dark, intricate, you know, interestingly woven... Gritty. Gritty story. Like, what other franchise... Like, you know, the Archies has been around for a while, but it didn't... (laughs) Jughead and and Hot Dog and Veronica, they didn't have this trajectory. Like, Josie and the Pussycats was a cartoon, and then they just made a hokey movie of it in the 90s, but they didn't... Not this. Like, what is... What is this? You know, what else has has gone along this trajectory? All right, this is, uh, the the, the critics liked it. They didn't like it as much as the the first one. They always shave a few points off, but the first one was great, and this one is just good. I didn't see it. I say 82. Whoa, how about that? I also have 82. This had the the misfortune of being the follow-up to a truly spectacular movie. It's good. It's just nowhere near the one that it preceded or preceded. This was the one with Bane, correct? Yes, with Tom Hardy as Bane. All right. Well, I would have said 82, but I had to take two points off for the fact that I couldn't fucking understand a single (laughs) word he said. I said 80. Yeah. Donald, Mr. Trump, President... You know what, I did very strong analysis on this movie. And it came out during Obama, the failed presidency of Obama. So so I'm thinking they give it sort of a African-American bump to try and double 45. So I said 90. Oh, wow, solid thinking. Interesting. All right, Dawson. Uh, The Dark Knight Rises is certified fresh. At 87%. Ooh. It's a close game. The people had it at uh, 90. Yeah, I know every... the people. I know the people. Do you see that? That's what we should count that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You're the president of the people, and you got, you guessed 90. So uh, good on you. Yeah, everybody, it's funny. We went to a bar up the street from the barbecue place, and the woman who was uh, working as the hostess, who was letting us in, who was trying to explain to us that this bar was at capacity, but the roof bar bar wasn't, was wearing the mask, and like Bane, couldn't understand a goddamn word she was saying. Yes, Brian. I'm sorry, to, I'm still sorry to interrupt. Was Mr. Trump having trouble with that water right there? I'm, He's I, doing just fine, Brian. He didn't want to get it on his tie. Thank what, you. What happened? Gina. Yeah. Sorry. I was just having a, a strong drink of water. And Why don't you show, being rude. show Adam how you make sure you don't get the water on your tie, because that was your explanation. I'm, and I'm holding the microphone mm-hmm. and the glass, That's which good. still has liquid in it. And it's mm-hmm. just, you know, we can't hear, but okay, so we see you're drinking with two hands. All right. Uh, but, you know, because I've got the microphone as well. <laughs> right. It's called strength. Understood. I, I know... Um, I know you don't drink alcohol. I know your brother Fred, I think, uh, had a little problem with alcohol and, and, and left us uh, early. And that's one of the reasons you don't uh, drink the alcohol. Uh, your niece wrote that tell-all book that uh, 
sold 950 units in, in 950,000 units in, in pre-sales. I mean, I write books. That is astronomical. Did you, did you read the book? Was there any kernels of truth in there? No, we, the only truth was I once called her, well, they, she said I called her stacked. Yeah. Okay. And what I actually said was, you're fucking stacked. So that was sort of a misquote. But other than that, it was a total book of lies. And I'm not impressed. She, so she sold, she sold a million copies. It's no big deal. Yeah, well, it's a lot of units. And I, I agree. Stacked was, yeah, I mean, the uh, doctor that delivered Gina called her stacked. So Funny. I don't think it's that big a deal. But that's just me. Wait, 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 wait. Are you trying to tell me that on, on everyone's birth certificate, it doesn't give height, weight, and cup size? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? If I get a this second our... term, it will. If I get it, believe Thank me, you. if I get a second <laughs> term, it will. Oh, it yeah. <laughs> During Trump's presidential run in 2016, he went from one campaign rally to the next, playing the theme for the Harrison Ford action classic, Air Force One. Years later, he gleefully revealed sketches of the $3.9 billion makeover for his new presidential aircraft, though he would not reveal what he'd do if Gary Oldman took over the flight from 1997, Air Force One. Do you think there was an actual conversation that Trump had with one of like the designers at Boeing when they were talking about remanufacturing, you know, freshening up Air Force One, where he was like, I don't get why I can't put a chandelier in an airplane. <laughs> Donald, make... make totally, it's a totally reasonable question. Yeah, so, again, I'm not an engineer, but I would say uh, there's something called... Um, you don't want that kind of mass. It's like a counter mass. You know, as you take off, it's sliding backwards. Then as you level out, it slides forward. I think in, in, the, um, in the racing car world, we call it unsprung weight. It's just, it's kind of the enemy of flight, you know? Well, you know, when I saw Jeff Epstein's plane had mirrors all along the ceilings, oh, I said, can't we do a chandelier? Oh, were you on, you, but you were on that plane? No, no. Oh, okay, so you just, you just saw pictures of the plane. Right, when we were, in, you know, when we were deciding not to go on the plane, I saw pictures and it was oh, okay, not so a nice place, not a nice place. Mr. President, you call him Jeff Epstein and we're all calling him Jeffrey. It suggests a level of intimacy or knowledge at least that you might know him well. Oh, is it Jeffrey? I don't even know. I thought I'd heard Jeff. I must have missed it. I don't know this person. You don't know the man. I didn't even know he was a man. I, okay, I all right. So many He's a man. With names these days. All right. It's just a person that I that I've heard of once. Well, you did wish Ghislaine Maxwell well, so that was very nice of you. Oh well, we pronounced it. We pronounced it Gislaine. Oh, uh, sure. Right. So, you know, that's said. what we called the runway on Jeff Epstein's private island. <laughs> worst, one of the worst streets in America to live on, Gislaine. Like, Strongly agree. Yeah, especially during the summer months. Um, <laughs> all right, now listen. I got to be honest. I like this movie. I, it's a I fun. Did. It's a fun action movie. I, I like it too. But the critics can't like this movie. But it was good. It had uh, what's his name, right? Played the heavy in Tom. Gary uh, Oldman. Or Gary Oldman, right? He was he was great. And this it was like it was like a fun action movie and uh but the, again the critics can't like it that much even though it was it it delivered i'm gonna say we're getting down to crunch time i gotta make up some points here was it fresh in this way i'm gonna say it was good enough at 63 yeah, uh, this movie should have been dumb and stupid. In fact, it was really, really good. Wolfgang Peterson, the director, is a like really good director. He did it in the Line of Fire. I think he did the uh, the, the Perfect Storm. Uh, I went eighty three. It's a good movie. Ooh. Okay, I've never seen it. All I can think about is uh, Con Air. I, I don't know anything about this movie. I said fifty eight. President Trump. This is a tremendous film. Very strong. And I wrote down 91. Wow. Wow. 
the critics liked it. I think it was one of the few times I think I agreed with the far left movie critic, fake news. <laughs> Air Force One is certified fresh at 76%. Oh, nice. Wow. And it's the people movie. have it at 66. What the hell, Donald? What is going on with the people? Well, that's probably voter fraud. I'd oh, say. oh. Yeah, it's a lot of mail-in, I think a lot of mail-in Rotten Tomato scores. Oh, so you think there was some ballot harvesting going on with this Rotten Tomato scores, huh? Well, Air Force Two probably, you know, was competing and said, let's ruin Air Force One. It's a great movie. Yeah, listen, I, again, uh, the critics at 76, the people at 66. You never, I never saw that one coming. All right, are we at the last one, uh, Dawson? Two more. Two more. Earlier this year at a rally in Colorado Springs, Trump told the crowd he was displeased with the South Korean film Parasite that took home the <laughs> Best Picture Oscar. He said, quote, let's get gone with the wind back, please. Oh. Sunset Boulevard. So many great movies. It's a film that still makes headlines to this day from 1939. Gone with the wind. Gone with the wind. This is a tricky one. Get, it's having a weird renaissance. Yeah. Some contemporary reviews might throw it off. Donald, what do you think about uh, us trying to do a little revisionist history by, uh, you know, cutting up this film and or doing, I think we put a header on it now where we explain that there's some... Uh, messages in here that aren't politically correct. Do you, you, you a fan of that? I don't, I don't like it one bit. I think, you know, if they were gonna, you know, it's not like they made it more realistic. They just added some woman talking in front of the movie, mm -hmm. but it's still the same movie. So mm -hmm. now they're just ruining the movie with some woman in an office, you know, giving some introduction that's totally not necessary. So it I think it's a disgrace, but can I get my score? Yeah, I just want to say this. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if this should just be expanded to every movie. Like before I watch Gone in 60 Seconds, some sheriff would have to explain to me, <laughs> like in front of a, a, a cyclorama, that these were stunt drivers and this wasn't indicative of the way people should drive in this country. Like, should we just ruin every movie with a fucking precursor? <laughs> I think that's where this is headed. I think this is where we're headed as a yes. movie country. How about... Before Star Wars. Before Star Wars. Do not try to breathe in outer space. Right. Or like before any of us get laid, Dr. Drew puts a video on that explains STDs are easily, easily <laughs> spread during intercourse. Like, yeah. All right. So they, uh, the critics had to love this one, but has it gone down a few points over the years? Because it's not uh, politically correct. Um, I'm going to just jump in and say this is still gone with the wind. 94. Yeah, I wanted to go 100 for that reason, but I do. I, I'm accounting for contemporary reviews, reviews that you know it doesn't hold up. So I said in 90. 90. Yeah, I think it's weird that I went this low, but this is a this is a very tough one. So I said because of the, the press, it's been getting 84. President Trump. 99, because I think only a couple of critics were cowards and lowered it from 100, so I'm saying 99. 99. Gone with the Wind is certified fresh at 91%. Mm. Okay. Mm. People had it at 93, okay. It's only 99 uh, critic votes in there, which is, I don't know, I feel like the, the movie's 85 years old, like there might be a couple more. All right, last one, here we go, championship rounds. Finally, we discuss a film that Trump and Melania Trump actually appear in. They're walking down the red carpet and Trump delivers the line, look, without Derek Zoolander, Male modeling wouldn't be what it is today. <laughs> President Trump, can we hear that line? Without Derek Zoolander, the great Derek Zoolander, <laughs> male modeling would not be where it is today. That's great. I could Still imagine. Still not clear if Trump knew he was in the movie from 2001, which, which starring movie? Ben Stiller. Zoolander. And Owen Wilson. The movie is Zoolander. God, it's so funny. All right, so people like this movie. They think it's funny. I never, you know, I saw bits and pieces of it. I never really got 
on the, the train with it, but I know people love it. I think Brian's in the lead right now. I feel like one of us are gonna have to just stick this landing and get it right on. If you get the number, dead nuts on, we'll do a five point uh, deduction. So uh, I'm gonna say the critics didn't love it as much as many of the people we know. And I'm gonna say for that reason, it is a 66. Oh my God, I'm right there with you. Sorry, buddy, 67. Oh man. Well, this was probably one of those movies, right place, right age group, right time. I said 79. Mr. Trump? And you know what, with the Trump melatonin bounce, with the two of us being in it, mm. I said 84. Mm. Wow. Zoolander is fresh at 64%. And see the people have it at 80. The one time I get close and Paul Bryan's uh, only a point off. All right, tally it up. You know, I was thinking, I think it'd be funny because I don't think Trump could be in a movie anymore because uh, if somebody said, uh, Donald Trump, your line is, there's Derek Zoolander, he's the future of modeling. You couldn't just deliver that line. You'd have to say he's terrific, or he's a dear friend, or you know him well. Like, you couldn't just say that line, right? Well, no, it's called, you know, great actors, they sort of improv, you know, they do the sort of, they give me the line and then I give it sort of greater so I'd say, strength. You just say, Derek Zoolander, that guy, is a gift to modeling. Derek Zoolander, the great Derek Zoolander. All right, hold on, let me, just, let, me just, let me just stop you there. Just say Derek Zoolander, that guy's a gift to modeling. Got it. Derek, we love him, Derek Zoolander. <laughs> Yeah, he's a on. gift. It's like a gift. I'm you know, sorry. Like a present cut, when somebody cut. gives you something, he's a gift. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Just say modeling. Derek Zoolander, gift to modeling. There you go. I thought that's what I said. Well, no, you, Derek? you, you keep stopping and making sidebar comments about Zoo. Let's go ahead. Sorry. I'll we'll try this. Derek Zoolander. That guy, I mean, I tell that guy, this, this guy is so strong. He is, I think, <laughs> what people would call a gift. It's called a gift. To modeling, and I know model. I am, I'm married to, to a model, so I know. Yeah, modeling. okay. Could we just. Maybe we could just get the words separately and we could just edit them together. You know, just say Zoolander and Gift and model, and, and we'll just kind of cobble it together in the edit bay. Derek, you know, like it's almost like Rick, but then you add like a, more letters to it, so it's almost like his name could be Rick. <laughs> Zoolander, not from the, not an animal though, he's not from the zoo, he's just sort of, you know, a person with the name Zoolander. And he's a great guy, and I tell you, that guy's a, uh, what we call a gift, okay? Mm. To modeling, great mm. model. Yeah, I, maybe we can get Bloomberg to deliver this line. I feel like it would, <laughs> I feel like it would work. All right, Dawson, uh, tally it up and tell us what we got. All right, President Trump and your first appearance in the Rotten Tomatoes game, coming in with a score of 51. Ooh, Ooh not too bad. Respectable. respectable. Thank you, very respectable. <laughs> Adam Carolla. <laughs> you certainly made the podium because besting the Donald by 10 points, your score is 41. Respectable. <laughs> Bald Brian. You certainly beat Gina Grad. <laughs> as did everyone else. God damn it. Gina, you did not make the podium 54. Mm. Oh. Paul Brian, best score of the night. A small 17. Wow. Oh, Congratulations. <laughs> wow. That's a good score. Averaging less than three and a half per, per, per movie. Not too goddamn shabby. All right, Gina, why don't you get uh, ready with the news you here? Got it. I will uh, hit uh, my Tommy John spot. You guys into Tommy John's summer in full swing. 
Oh man, it is hot out there. Tommy John, proud to uh, introduce their new essentials. I hope you guys and I hope you gals are wearing your Tommy John underwear because this stuff is just the best, especially if you're working out, especially if you're riding your bike, you're moving around hot outside, guaranteed to uh, redefine comfort and uh, no matter how hot it is outside. Super soft second skin now features a new hammock pouch for the uh, men out there. And uh, they make the bras and they make the ladies underpants as well. If you don't love your first pair, get a full refund with their best pair you'll ever wear or it's free. Guarantee, right Dawson? For a limited time, go to TommyJohn.com slash Adam to get 20% off your first order. That's TommyJohn.com slash Adam for 20% off. TommyJohn.com slash Adam. All right, Gina, let's do a little news, shall we? News with grad. Let's do it. News with Gina Grad. Breaking viral. All those crazy Trump tweets. Give me news with Gina Grad. Trouble in the Middle East. Celebrity drunk meltdown. See news with Gina Gina Grad. The news with Gina Grad. JL Colvin does an Adam Carolla impersonation as well, by the way. <laughs> So, um, I don't know, we're doing the news, it seems like the best time for you to do a little Adam Carolla, so maybe uh, you, can, you can respond as me to uh, whatever, whatever you like, Jail. Sounds good. I'll dust it off. It may, I hope it's not rusty. No, <laughs> yours, yours is strong. Go ahead. Well, I hate to start off with such sad news, but this just in, as we record this, a big RIP to legendary broadcaster Regis Philbin. He has died at the age of 88, natural causes, and of course, host of numerous shows, including uh, Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, then Regis and Kelly, and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. He was nominated 37 times for Daytime Emmys. He won six. He well, it's, a, it's, it's, it's kind of an old Jeff Ross routine, but when you're 88, we don't need the natural causes. Like, he didn't die in a pole vaulting Paris. incident. <laughs> He was skydiving. The chute didn't open. His dune buggy flipped over. <laughs> like, yeah, nat natural. Oh, yeah, I don't want to live problem. in a world without uh, Regis. Yeah. Jail? I mean, Adam? You know, I, I say this with respect, but, I mean, was Regis actually talented? I mean, did he have a real talent? I, I say this respectfully. Like, you know, I mean, you host some shows, you... I don't know. You sit with a drunk <laughs> Kathy Lee. It's you know I respect the longevity, but yeah. You know, no, I mean, it, is it real? Is it really a talent? Let me add to me. We give game show hosts way too much credit because they read the answers, but it's not like they know the answers. They read the answers. You know, we go like Alex Trebek. That guy's a fucking genius. Yeah, he reads answers and. We just read a lot of stuff too. Like, but we gave him a lot of credit for being pretty wise and sharp and everything, but all that shit's on a three by five card. So he uh, will be missed. He will be missed. Yeah, not by anyone we know, but he's definitely gonna be missed by <laughs> potential family members. Although he must have a, a small fortune to leave behind, right? Oh sure. Oh yeah. And uh, I and also is, is there any other human being ever named Regis? Is that a name? Is that, is that a family name? Is it that's, short That's family? a hotel. Yeah. yeah. It didn't catch on. Yes, that's right. His, uh, his blessed dad, the Saint Regis. Um, <laughs> yes, he shall uh, be missed, sort of, but not that, that much. But look, God willing, one day some dickhead comic will be talking about me and how I died and no one gives a shit and they call that Akuna Matata, the circle of life, right? What would it sound you know, like if Adam Carolla said Akuna Matata, Jail? Akuna Matata. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. welcome. All right, Gina, you know who, what else? You know who is going strong? Hmm. Both of them are going strong. Phil Donahue and Marlo Thomas. Mm, I think 84 and they, they just wrote a book about how to keep the, the marriage fresh. So uh, we're, we're, they're going to stick around for a while, I think. I, uh, I don't want to hear. Are, so they're married. They've been married, married. for, for yeah, 50 for, years. Uh, 97 years. I don't. Uh, <laughs> once you get over 80, I don't want any books about how to keep the marriage fresh. <laughs> eh? I don't want to hear about you guys having sex because I, I just ate, number one. <laughs> 
Number two, you don't keep the marriage fresh over 80. You wait to die because you're too lazy to get divorced at that point. And you're essentially unfuckable to the rest of humanity. Other than that, I wish those kids well. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. So we just found out that hey, a can I say this? Yes. You know how I hate my parents? No. Yeah, it's I hate my parents. Once, you know, come up once or twice. Refresh me. Maybe it's because I wasn't here last night. My dad is going to be turning 89 in about a month, and every time I hear about some great American who died earlier than my dad, I get angry at my dad. I'm like, now my dad has outlived Regis Philbin. I mean, Regis Philbin, I, you gotta look it up, Max Zapata. He must have been born within seven months of my dad, and my dad had the gall to outlive the great Regis Philbin. Can you believe the gall of that man, the temerity? He had no business. Yeah. He has no business. I'm going to tell him next time I see him, <laughs> you have outlived Regis Philbin. What makes you think your shit doesn't stink? <laughs> that Answer you me. can outlive the great Regis Philbin. <laughs> my dad, I don't know what year my dad was born or what month it was. I know, this has actually been a mystery we've been trying to find out for a few months now. I, I don't know how to... I think He's going to turn 89 in September, so we could probably back out 89 years. But Regis must have been... Must Regis, have... Was, Regis was one month shy of his 89th birthday. Oh, my God. He'd probably oh no. share the same birthday. I'm now livid at my dad. How dare you? All right. Now, Regis... His wife? Is his wife still alive? Didn't he always mm. talk about his wife in that show? And he had that... Uh, Max Pat will find that one out. You go ahead, okay. Gina. But, uh, I will. He had that wife that he always... I mean, they do like mocha mix commercials and stuff the Joy? like that. Joy Philbin? Joy Philbin, yes. They do commercials for coffee cream or something like from the she 80s. Is, she's still alive. Yeah. She's still alive. Yeah. All right. Joy, she, 79. Hold on. 79? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Jesus yeah. Christ. So my bitch of a mom has outlived <laughs> Joy Philbin, just rub it in her face. Boy, when I see those two, I'm gonna let them have it next time I see them. This is an outrage, this is an attack. You're gonna give them what for? Mm-hmm. Well, there's a celebrity that turns out had a secret case of COVID, was in the hospital for a while, and we're just finding out now, that man's name is Mel Gibson. Mel he Gibson. revealed, yeah, that he spent a week in a California hospital back in April with COVID-19. The actor's rep said the 64-year-old was very sick, treated with remdesivir. He has since recovered and tested negative uh, numerous times. He's also tested positive for antibodies now, but that was a super secret case of COVID. So it's funny, like, he has simultaneously the best and the worst publicists because... Some things, they're really good at keeping secret from the public, yeah. like COVID-19. But calling uh, highway patrol officers monkey nipples and little Jewesses and screaming into a telephone, you need to come to this hot tub and blow me, that they couldn't keep couldn't out of the trades. They couldn't keep that out of the newspapers. But the COVID thing, they did a good job of, you know, mums a word on that. Wouldn't, yeah. it be great? Wouldn't it be great if it was the same PR person this whole time? Like, all right, listen, I want this kept quiet. Not like last time. I wonder if he had, like, if he had a bad case and then, like, his Jewish doctors came in and, like, his anger fueled oh. him to, be re to recover. He was like, get your hands off of me. <laughs> or maybe he had a mild case and the Jewish doctors came in and went, yeah, put a little <laughs> tap water in that syringe and... Uh, <laughs> Call it resmerophir or whatever, whatever that shit is. <laughs> call it, uh, just spit, piss in that syringe and call it hydroxychloroquine, <laughs> would you? <laughs> Don't mess with the Jews, they're all doctors. Thank but, you. And then later on, when there's a malpractice situation, you try to get the other half of the Jews and they're all lawyers and now you're really fucked. Just <laughs> twice, who man? That's right, sorry. Well, this is actually, I'm hoping the President Trump can um, enlighten us on this. I'll just give the broad strokes, but I'm sure he, uh, he could provide us maybe with some more details. Uh, the President has announced 
He has accepted an invitation from the Yankees to throw out the first pitch before their August 15th game against the Red Sox. Up until now, Trump has not thrown a first pitch, which every American president has done since 1910. It was Taft. Uh, Trump joked that Yankees president Randy Levine assured him he won't get booed because there won't be a crowd. Mm. Sure. But so it's, thoughts, Mr. President. Yeah. Well, let me just say this. As far as the sound effects guy, they got the cheering, the mild cheering, the big cheering. They got to have yeah. a boo button no, I, in there, too, right? I, I just made this point today. My in-laws are huge Dodgers fans. So we're watching a few innings of Dodgers Giants. And I'm um, like, they got to have the boo button for when, like, the pitcher throws over first base for the third time. Or right. when the catcher comes out for the visiting team to talk to the pitcher and they're, like, bringing up the m- momentum. Yeah, for or, sure you got to Or, or like, the streaker gets onto the field, yeah. you know? Like, they got to they gotta have that. Trump, you're going to throw out that first pitch? I'm going to throw it very strongly. As, as you know, I was a great baseball player back in my youth. Mm-hmm. And... I am, you know, Fauci, little Fauci, we call him, he's like the, you know, snack size version of a doctor. His throw was so bad. I almost want to thank him because he set the bar so low. Now I'm going to throw with such heat. It's going to be, you know, I hope I don't injure the catcher. You know, I don't want to do that. But I got to tell you, with Fauci throwing it to, you know, eight feet in front of him to the left, I think I... I think I'm going to look very strong uh, when I throw that great pitch. I'm having this fantasy of Trump going out there, winding up and throwing like a Roger Clemens type fastball, like right down the pipe. And then later on that night, CNN going, it was a little off the plate. Like it was a little, it didn't, he didn't have movement in the ball. He just didn't have his stuff tonight. Yet they... Uh, they clocked it. It was clocked at 88. That is not, that is, that is a triple A ball type speed. That is not. Yes, he was wearing wing tips and a, and a three piece suit, but if you can't break into the 90s, you're not, you have no business on that mound. Yes. Sorry. And they checked the ball. Turns out it was doctored. They found a little pine tar and some uh, brill cream on there. All right. So uh, you're gonna so, so Trump, you're gonna go out there and throw out that first pitch. You played in high school. I did. I was a very strong baseball player in high school. Uh-huh. <laughs> now there's a lot of controversy. Speaking of high school, did you have someone take your SAT so that you go to the Wharton School of Business? No. This is this is of course you know from the nasty niece you know a fake book. Fake book. What happened was here's what happened. I was going to take the test. Okay, on a Saturday, like everybody takes. Mm -hmm. And my great father, Fred Trump, came down the stairs and he said, Sir, even my father called me Sir when I was in high school. (laughs) And he said, Sir, you don't have to take the SAT. They already want you in the school. You're too smart. Mm -hmm. So he sent, he sent an Asian student Mm -hmm. to go to the school Mm -hmm. and tell them on my behalf that I didn't have to take the test. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, so he went to, he went to the test. Mm-hmm. And I assume told them, and I went to great schools. Mm-hmm. So he didn't take the test things up. and take it for you. Oh, no, 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 no. My father said, sir, this kid is going to go and just deliver a message. Didn't, mm-hmm. Nobody took the test. I didn't have to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a lot of uh, very formal family that your dad would call you sir. Well, it's, that... it's, it's the respect. It's everybody. You know, the generals never called the president sir until I got elected. Now all they say is sir when I walk into a room. Mm-hmm. So it's just, you know, I, I bring, you know, more respect and honor to the office, I think, mm. than we've had in a long time. Mm. You yeah. classed up the joint, mm. for sure. I really did. With the, you know, I don't see a huge table of fast food with any uh, other presidents. That's true. Right, that's true, yeah. Mm-hmm. You got us so. there. So I know we, we talk, you know, there's a lot in the zeitgeist lately about, you know, body positive, everyone's beautiful. And uh, I got to hand it to this woman because I think they might be right. A 56-year-old woman from California, she's technically from Calabasas, a neighborhood not too far away, made her debut in Sports Illustrated's swimsuit issue, Holy Moly. She's 56-year-old, we're looking at a picture of her. Her name's Kathy Jacobs. She's been married for 25 years, she has a daughter in med school. She said in an interview that a year and a half ago she was sweeping hair off the floor at a beauty salon and she just decided to take some pics and submit herself to the magazine. And she's hoping that this will lead to other opportunities because she says old is gold. Old is gold? 
Old as gold. Wow. Yeah, well, look. I mean, damn. Look at that body. I'm jealous. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's true, but we're not out at 23-year-olds to fuck, are we? I mean, I, I, if we're on an island and there's only 56-year-olds to fuck, oh. then she's number one in line. But as long as there's still 23-year-olds, then it's a wonderful achievement. But I mean, it's... It's like it's like when the you know once in a while there'll be some you'll be at like some uh, pickup game and at the YMCA and as there'll be some forty six year old dude and he'll be able to dunk a basketball still but he still wouldn't make the cut for any NBA team and that's that's what I'm saying so it's a it's a wonderful achievement but how old did you say her daughter was in med school she she's in med school well see so that's maybe. where I'd like to kind of shift. The direction of the conversation, like, because if the if the apple don't fall too far from the tree, that daughter's the one you want to keep an eye on. And by the way, can people stop pretending like uh, they just sort of tripped and stumbled into modeling? Like, well, I went down to the beach and I got my underpants and I took a few pictures. I didn't know what would come of it. Really, has anyone ever had that impulse? I'm gonna just go down to the beach and get my underpants, take a look pictures. I didn't know what would happen. Why'd you fucking go to the beach and take pictures if you didn't want this to happen? You know you're hot, admit it. You're hot. She's hot. Fine, I'm hot. Right, you're hot. That's 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 what it is. And um, oh, okay. And for a uh, for fifty, but she's been married for twenty five years, right? Mm, yeah. So that's got to be a pretty good deal for that guy, right? Because that's a Mr. pretty Jacobs. that that really hasn't dropped off in in twenty five years, right? She would ace your wedding gown uh, uh, yeah. initiative. Yeah, my wedding gown initiative is. Uh, <laughs> I, you guys got to help me with this because I may have forgotten it. But uh, you get a thousand bucks to spend on a wedding gown. For every five hundred bucks you spend on it, after a thousand bucks, you have to fit into it for the next five years. So if I know it sounds horrible, especially with all this Me Too th- shit, but. I'm just saying, my wife's wedding gown, I don't know, it was like 2,800 bucks, and now I have to pay to store it, which is, you have to pay for like temperature control storage, and then they always do this thing where I go, 20, you know, I'm renting a tuxedo. You're spending 2,800 bucks, you're only gonna wear the gown once. And every chick goes, what do you mean? When our daughter walks down the aisle, she's going to be wearing this gown. And I'm like, really? Why aren't you wearing your mom's gown? I just did the fucking math. Oh, by the way, I'm sure this gown that's 31 years old will be in style when my daughter goes down the aisle. This beautiful mustard colored macrame gown. Yes, I'm I'm sure of it. Yeah, with a big jizz stain on the front of it now. <laughs> no daughter wants to go down the aisle with daddy's jizz and a big Rorschach test. Uh, no, I'm, I, no, I'm saying no daughter. This shouldn't be offensive. No daughter wants daddy's jizz Rorschach. <laughs> jizz Rorschach on, her, on the front of her gown. Who could Sorry. disagree with that? That's right, that's right. Sorry. All right, let's do one more, Gina Grant. All right. Well, here, let's, let's get you a good one. Um, oh, here we go. You know, back to school is right around the corner, and whether they're going in or not, they're going to have to pay some sort of tuition. So the Satanic Temple is here to help. The Satanic Temple is offering scholarships to high school graduates. And Adam, I think this is something mm. you could really get behind. It's a Salem, Massachusetts-based group. They advocate stricter separation of church and state, and they have $500 for the Devil's Advocate Scholarship to any 2020 graduate. Here's how you apply. Students must answer one of two questions. One is um, they have to describe what they've done to promote the organization's mission, or you can describe a teacher who crushed your spirit undermined your confidence and made you hate every minute you were forced to be in school <laughs> and out of and you could do it as an essay poem or film and uh hopefully you'll get yourself a 500 hundred dollar scholarship i had like how many bad teachers did you guys have versus Ugh. good teachers like i feel like i had three good teachers 
and 128 bad teachers. And like, like, every time everyone wants to go, these guys are heroes. Actually, this is an interesting thing that would probably go over well in Texas. We have our teacher and cop ratios all fucked up. We live in a society where like there's a bunch of bad cops and a couple of good cops. And the reality is there's a bunch of good cops and a couple of bad cops. And then we go, these teachers are all heroes, but there's a couple of bad ones. Most teachers fucking suck. There's three good ones. Apply the fucking same ratio that Black Lives Matters does to cops, but just do it to teachers. If, by the way, any of them will ever agree to go back to work. None of them, my kids, none of those, none of those teachers are going back. Like, it's after January, like... My son is gonna walk into that classroom when they eventually agree to go back to school and I'm gonna be like, Sonny, it's time to go back to school. And he'll go, okay, I guess I better shave my beard and get my prostate checked if we're going in. <laughs> Where's my stroke cane? And then he'll go, and I'll be older than Regis. Who was outlived by stuff. James Carolla, sorry, yes? I was going to say, it might be good for team sports, though, if he goes back as, like, a 19-year-old ninth grader. Sure. Oh, yeah. No, he's going back like uh, Forrest Whitaker went back to uh, high school in Fast Times at Ridgemont. Yeah, that's be, that'll be my son. Yeah. There'll be a bunch of guys playing JV football that are 27 years old. <laughs> All right, you, Tina. You, Sorry. I just want to ask real quick, do you remember any of the specific insults to Adam I know you do that that teachers uh, gave to you because a classic one that was given to me and I was given a lot of them because I was a a real bad student a real dummy but one of them said to me and I was well into my high school years said Gina your parents buy you books and paper to go to school and all you do is eat the goddamn crayons wow wow yeah what does that mean <laughs> I had uh, well I had Miss Commissar who was like in her 80s, say to me after class, and it totally, she said, Adam, you're funny guy. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, and all the girls like you, she said, which I was like, no, they do not, but you're on a roll, <laughs> keep going. And then she paused and she said, do your parents beat you? And I was like, no, I don't know what your observational skills are after presiding in front of students for the last 47 years, Miss Commissar, but you've learned nothing. My dad's never left, let, never put a hand on me. I did also have Mr. Smith tell me, he looked at me and he went, you know, Adam, you're awesome. And I went, well, really? Thanks. And he went, yeah, aw, sometimes you're good, and aw, sometimes you suck. Oh, classic. <laughs> I was like, I felt good for about eight seconds. I had Mr. Tomey explain to me really, my counselor explained to me like really condescendingly when I was like, I want to take Mr. Jeffrey's uh, history class because all my friends and all like the cool kids and the popular kids are like taking Mr. Jeffrey's history class. So could you get me into Mr. Jeffrey's history class? And he literally gave me a sit down conversation like that's a little too much class for you, Dumbo. Like those kids are normal kids. You're you. Where's your dunce cap, boy? You're not you go into that class. He makes you do work. Like, you're, you're going to fail horribly because you have to do stuff in that class. I, I remember uh, lots of those. Yes, Brent? I got one that's in that caliber. So my history teacher was also the cool history teacher, like my sophomore year, and Mr. Bertetta at Sarah High School. And um, I, of course, uh, totally you know, abused his trust and was acting up every day. And for the God, 10th time I got in trouble, I came home to my mom already home. And she goes, Brian, can you explain this? Presses play on the answering machine. It's Mr. Bertetta leaving a message, that, a lengthy message that includes the phrase verbatim, Brian is one of the worst students I've had the misfortune of teaching in my 22 years. <laughs> wow. Well done. Yeah, misfortune. <laughs> JL, you uh, had any bad ones? I, uh, no, not that I can think of, but the... <laughs> <laughs> to ruin the story, the only funny story I have from, from school is in third grade, I was five foot two, and my teacher, Miss Schoen, was five foot one. 
When I was eight years old, I was five too. I'm you're you're now. what? I'm six six now? Six seven. Six, six seven. seven now. So yeah, you can't tell from this screen. No. Uh, you can't. <laughs> But no, I don't think I've had any, I mean, I've had like mediocre teachers and good teachers, but I don't think I have any sort of awesome. I went to private school, so I guess there's oh, more of a vetting okay. process yeah. there. So. Not, not public. <laughs> All right, Gina, let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. All right, we're going to uh, bid adieu to Brian and Gina Grad and Jail Coven. And uh, you can uh, listen to Jail's uh, podcast, Making Podcast Great Again, website JL Coven. That's C A U V I N dot com. We're going to close out the show with a little uh, Adam Carolla's Unprepared. So uh, you guys uh, raise your hand, put Bye. one word out there. Bye, guys. Uh, put one word out, and uh, I will do a uh, made-up uh, stand-up uh, bit on that uh, one word. Hydrochloroquine. So says uh, says that person there. Yes, I. <clears throat> hydrochloroquine. I was talking about this to uh, Dr. Drew uh, earlier today. Actually, the thing that's funny is everyone turned on hydrochloroquine because Trump said it might have some promise, but. The news media was acting like Trump knew what hydrochloroquine was 10 minutes before he said it. He didn't. Somebody just told him it shows some promise, and then he said it shows some promise, and then Joy Behar and all the other yentas on the news went berserk on hydrochloroquine. It's just some inert pill that people have been taking for 65 years. Dr. Drew said it's less it has less side effects than aspirin and tylenol so here's the thing that's insane about cnn cnn has been ramming this narrative up our ass for the last eight months that covid19 was going to kill us all in our sleep but we were going to get a light, dry raping before it killed us in our sleep. And we're reaching the grim milestone of 87,000 Americans. And we have more new cases in Florida and Arizona and Texas. And this, there's nothing. So CNN is pushing nothing but grim milestones and how this is all going to kill us and how no one is safe to go outside unless you're protesting Black Lives Matter and then it's okay. But no, but you're not safe on the beach and you're not safe in the nail salon and you're not safe at the bar or the hair salon. This is a number one world-class killer of all Americans. And then somebody says... How about we take this 60-year-old pill? Somebody said that might be effective. And then CNN went, fuck that pill. That's going to kill you faster. So, CNN, I ask you, are you this scared of COVID-19 or do you hate hydrochloroquine with a fucking red-hot passion? It can't be both. If you're preaching that you're scared shitless of COVID-19 and somebody says this drug may help lessen the effects of COVID-19, you can't explain that taking that drug will kill you. You can't have both. If you can't share the same screen or the same mind or the same teleprompter, that's how I know these people are full of shit. They... Well, look, I don't want to go full political here, but CNN's approach to covid to uh, hydrochloroquine should have went, oh, I don't know, let's wait till the trials come out or let's take it or why not, or I guess so, or if everyone in India is taking it for malaria, well then so be it. Like that's what their, their approach should have been, some, something neutral, something like we'll wait and see because no one knows what this stuff is. Everything is brand new. You combine it with zinc, you do it early. Evidently, if you do it early with zinc, it has some effectiveness. And why wouldn't you just approach it that way instead of scream at everyone who's taking it and just politicize everything? And by the way, Trump didn't say, I invented hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> He said, some guy told me it may be effective. That's all. He can say a few things every once in a while. Like he could say, uh, don't dive into a shrub filled with cacti. And CNN could go, all right, a broke clock is worth, 
A broke clock works uh, is right uh, twice a twice a day. I, I know I screwed that thing up, but the point is, he, there's a couple of things he can say that you can agree with, and then just disagree with everything else that comes out of that guy's mouth. All right, hydrochloroquine. Yeah, don't get Dr. Drew started on that shit. He's he he's on it. California. Thanks for raising your hand. Um, <laughs> I just saw in the uh, news today that uh, Elon Musk is uh, building his new truck factory out here. And I think Joe Rogan is moving out here. And every, everybody is just leaving California because, uh, you know, and I, I don't know, you know, look, I like Texas, don't get me wrong. There are other places one could go from California. I'm sort of just thinking, instead of going inland, I'm just going out to sea. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fucking build a barge like Tom Hanks did in uh, Survivor or Island or whatever that was. A castaway, Castaway, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna build a barge and push it 26 miles out across into international waters and have prostitutes and gambling on it. Like I. I'm not going inland. I'm not paying any taxes or any, anything. So Texas is good. I think, you know, to be fair, let's be honest. Texas is good, but I don't know. Is Texas great? Yes. Hold on. Or is California a shit show inside a dumpster fire? Like, is, is so, here's what I'm saying. Maybe Texas is like the C-plus student, but the older brother's in juvie. You know what I mean? And you're like, you're like, well, every time you go, you should get your grades up. Look at Kurt. <laughs> He's in juvie. So is Texas the C plus student with the brother that's in juvie known as California or are you guys the Asian student who's crushing it on the SATs? Well, but here's how I know. Here's how I know Texas isn't that great. Well, hold on. This is you know, obviously not a popular thought here. <laughs> but, but wait a minute. I grew up in California, and I grew up all through the 70s and the 80s of California, and I don't remember hearing shit about how good Texas was. <laughs> I started hearing how great Texas was when LA fell off a fucking cliff. So did, did Texas just shoot up in the last few years or do we just dig a hole and bury ourselves in California? See, I, I cause I, listen, look, I like the show Dallas and Larry Hagman and J.R. Ewing, Ewing and listen, I, I, I grew up in California. I heard about Texas, but I didn't hear everyone had to pick up and move to Texas by Friday because California <laughs> It was not a shit show. You want to know the difference between uh, California and Texas yes. once upon a time? Yeah. Uh, picture this. Uh, the great Carol Shelby, yeah. born in Texas, yeah. moved to Venice Beach, California, so he could build automobiles and be left alone by the man. Imagine moving from yeah. Texas to Los Angeles so you could manufacture race cars. Could you imagine that today? No. Right, so everybody is now gonna have, so Texas, so if you wanna know, like if you wanna follow the trajectory of California in Texas, simply follow the automotive manufacturing innovative genius that is Carol Shelby and Elon Musk. Yeah. Carol Shelby starts in Texas, moves to California. Elon starts in California and moves to Texas. And if I was in front 
of the governor of California, I would simply just show him the graph. This is Elon. This is him driving to Texas. This is what it used to be. This would be Carol Shelby driving to California. Your shit show policies have gotten these people to do this. Thank you. All right, let's do one more. Kanye, we got, we got Kanye up front. Kanye, oh yeah, I'm down with my pre-pardon idea for, for Kanye. Um, Kanye, uh, Kanye's going nuts. At least he stopped making music, I guess, because uh, I, I always felt bad for uh, all the white people who had to pretend like he was a genius all the time but never knew what he did. You know, Kanye was, oh yeah, that guy's an innovator. That guy's a genius, yeah. Do <laughs> uh, you have any boss gags in the jukebox? Because I'm... <laughs> really know what's going on, but I have to pretend. I don't want to be called square or racist, so I'll just go Kanye West. That guy's a genius, even though I'm not familiar at all with uh, what he does. But um, I cannot see that guy. That guy's got to get divorced, right? And then who has more money, Kim Kardashian or him? Like, how does that work when those two get divorced, like is one of them's up to a billion, the other one's you know knocking on the door of a billion, like who gets the money when those two get divorced or does anybody get the money? And then who does Kim go on to and who does Kanye West go on to in terms of a sexual partner? Because um, I wouldn't want to be the next guy to fill Kanye's Yeezys when I came into uh, the Kardashian home. I think that what he calls his shoes, right? Yeah, I got the hip guys in the room. I'm just saying, would you want to be the next guy to have sex with Kim Kardashian? Because I feel like Kanye West, for all his faults, has got to be a sexual machine in the bedroom. Because he's nuts, and he's probably overhydrating, and he's probably looking at himself in the mirror, and he's probably got his, he probably fucks to his own music. I bet he's got that Gold Digger song on <laughs> while he's plowing Kim Kardashian. And I couldn't compete with that. I haven't invented, I'd be wearing like van slip-ons. I'd put my stand-up special on or maybe an episode of The Man Show. <laughs> I'd turn up like Seals and Crofts. Summer wind makes me, are you <laughs> Going through, blowing through the jet. You're looking for something? Yeah, so um, Kanye, I don't feel like people get up on uh, clock towers anymore with hunting rifles and go berserk, but whatever the version of that is for uh, Kanye, I, I fear it's, it's, coming, it's coming soon. And uh, if I were him, I would hire Dr. Drew and I would do that move that guys used to do with super important attache cases in the 70s where they would handcuff themselves to the attache case. So I, th I would hire Dr. Drew and I would literally just handcuff myself to him and everywhere I went, Dr. Drew would go with me. And I did that for 10 years, it's no picnic. <laughs> But Kanye is going to run for president, and he's going to run under the birthday party. Did you guys know that? It's not, he's not an independent, he's not a Republican or a Democrat, and he's not a Green Party. He's a birthday party, which I don't know. Maybe I should run under the pinata party? Are pinatas illegal yet? I feel like we outlawed lawn darts 34 years ago, but hanging a, a paper mache donkey, blindfolding a kid, handing him a mop handle, spinning him around till he's disoriented, and having him run at the donkey, swinging the mop handle around while a group of kids circle the donkey that's still perfectly acceptable in 2020. 
And should we, you know, we do, you know, we, you know, kids, we disorient them, you know, we go like, let's do that thing where you spin you around, we spin you around, and then you try to hit a softball, or we spin you around, and then we blindfold you, and we try to hit the donkey. Isn't that just preparing them to be alcoholics? <laughs> like, don't, isn't that just pre-alcoholism? Like, don't you guys remember laying on your bed and having the bed <laughs> spinning around when you were 22? And I think this spinning around is really just pre-alcoholic. And I'll bet you, if you spin around a kid and that, and you say to him, how do you feel? And he goes, oh man, I feel tired. I think I got to sit down. That kid's not going to have a problem with booze. But if you spin a kid around and stop him and go, how do you feel? And he goes, who needs a blowjob? You'd go, you stay away from the sauce, Junior. All right, I want to, uh, oh, one more quick uh, 15 second spot here. JB Weld, I hope you proud Texans are using JB Weld. Epoxy adhesive, it's a brand used by pros and DIYers, trusted for over 50 years, available at jbweld.com and retailers everywhere. I want to thank you guys for coming out tonight and being a great audience. I want to thank uh, Dawson and uh, Gina Grad and uh, Paul Bryan and Jail Coven for joining us tonight. Until next time, this is Adam Carolla saying mahalo. Thanks, guys.